the function of a candle is so beautiful in the sense that its function destroys itself. Hi, I'm Pierre Bachner. I'm an artist and designer, and I make sculptural candles. So my candles come from forms that I cast, and I mostly use fruits and vegetables. I haven't been a candle maker my entire life. The first candle I made was while I was studying abroad in Berlin, and my teacher had this mold making material that can pick up like so much detail, which usually when you make casts, it's really hard to get that much detail. So I brought this really complicated vegetable called a Romanesco, which has a mathematical structure of fractals. So each little part of it is technically infinite, like it can get smaller and smaller and smaller. I have an original form of the mold, but everything that's coming out of the mold is pretty unique because of the colors. I, as a kid, was like obsessed with wax and sticking my fingers in candles whenever I would go out to eat with my parents, much to their chagrin. But I just love the feeling of wax. I find it to be like really bodily in this way. It, it has heat, it retains heat. It can change from liquid to solid and back and it's constantly changing and it's so easy to manipulate, which I really like too. The process starts outside in the world looking for existing objects to cast. I'll go to different markets and I'll pick out fruits and vegetables that the shape appeals to me, the texture, the form. But then after that, I bring them into my studio and I can show you. First step is chopping up some wax so that I can melt it down and put into the molds. Um, I typically use two different kinds of wax. I have a soy and a paraffin. The soy is a lot more opaque and the paraffin is a lot more transparent. So the soy I can just chop up easily. It's really soft. That's probably a good size. And then the paraffin I have to chisel it because a little bit harder to break up. Now it's time to prepare the mold. So I have a spool of candle wick and the mold, and I string the wick through the mold, tape it up, and start filling it with wax. And now we're ready to pour the wax. Feeling for the next color, maybe this pastel green. So this is just a little block of colored wax, super pigmented, and I cut off a sliver. Don't even need that much. Put it in here. Stir it to help it melt. Yeah, so every time I finish a candle, I have no idea exactly how it will look until it comes out of the mold. And the different ways that colors come together is always surprising, and it's the most exciting part of the process for me. So the next step is pouring the colored wax into the molds. You have to make sure that the last layer is solidified so that they don't combine. And I usually just pour a little bit into each mold and then wait for it to harden. The candle is all done, wax is hardened, so now I'm going to cut into it and demold it, bend the flexible mold back and pop it out. Growing up in New York, you're surrounded by so many different cultures and especially cuisines. I grew up very close to Chinatown, so I was always walking through that neighborhood and going to the Union Square Farmer's Market, and you just see nature just makes things that you can't even imagine are real. I felt like I was in the middle of what was going on culturally in the world, and I had so much access to museums and art shows and music, and I, I always felt like 
I wasn't missing out on anything as long as I was taking advantage of the city. I don't release my candles in typical collections. I like to exist outside of that conventional timeline. When I pick a form, it's just because I've seen something out in the world that's inspired me and I want to cast it and I want to see how it fits into the family of candles I've already created. I'm interested in working in the realm of tacky and kitsch, but I want my work to subvert that and to take that idea and bring it into some new realm through color, through extreme texture and push those boundaries. Candles are made to burn. <laughs> the function of a candle is so beautiful in the sense that its function destroys itself. It exists in order to disappear, much like fruits and vegetables. I would love for people to have the experience of watching the candle deteriorate and melt, but it's also what I like about the process of creating these functional objects and giving them to other people is they get to choose what to do with them.